Divers who engage in scuba diving employ breathing apparatus that is entirely independent of a surface air source. Christian J. Lambertson came up with the moniker SCUBA, which stands for Self-Contained Underwater Breathing Apparatus, in a 1952 patent application. Scuba divers are more mobile and independent than surface-supplied divers, and they may spend longer underwater than free divers since they have their own supply of breathing gas, typically compressed air. Despite the widespread usage of compressed air, enriched air, sometimes known as nitrox, has gained popularity due to the decreased nitrogen consumption during lengthy and or frequent dives. Additionally, helium dilution of breathing gas can be employed to lessen the likelihood and consequences of nitrogen narcosis during deeper dives. Open circuit scuba systems, which include one or more diving cylinders carrying breathing gas at high pressure and are supplied to the diver through a diving regulator, release the breathing gas into the environment as it is exhaled. They might also have extra cylinders for decompression gas, breathing gas in an emergency, or range extension. Recycling of exhaled gases is possible with closed circuit or semi-closed circuit rebreather scuba systems. Since less gas is utilized compared to open circuit, a smaller cylinder or cylinders can be used for a dive that lasts the same amount of time. Rebreathers increase the amount of time spent underwater for the same amount of gas as open circuit scuba. They also produce fewer bubbles and less noise, which appeals to covert military divers who want to avoid being discovered, scientific divers who don't want to disturb the marine life, and media divers who don't want bubble interference. Scuba diving can be practiced professionally or recreationally for a variety of purposes, such as scientific research, military operations, and public safety. However, when possible, most commercial diving employs diving gear that is provided by the surface. Frogmen, combat divers, or attack swimmers are all terms used to describe scuba divers who participate in military covert operations. Fins attached to the feet are how scuba divers move underwater most of the time, but external propulsion can come from a diver propulsion vehicle or a sled pushed from the surface. Other gear required for scuba diving includes a mask to enhance underwater vision, exposure protection through a diving suit, ballast weights to overcome excess buoyancy, buoyancy control equipment, and equipment related to the particular circumstances and purpose of the dive, such as a snorkel when swimming on the surface, a cutting tool to manage entanglement, lights, a dive computer to track the status of decompression, and signaling devices. Scuba divers are trained by diving instructors connected to the organizations that grant these certifications in the processes and abilities appropriate to their level of certification. These include emergency measures for helping oneself and assisting another diver who is similarly equipped and is having trouble, as well as regular operating procedures for using the equipment and addressing the general underwater risks. Most training organizations demand a certain level of health and fitness, but in rare cases a higher level of fitness may be desirable. Divers must be able to maintain a steady depth in midwater and manage their pace of descent and ascent when underwater in order to dive safely. The diver will either ascend or fall depending on their overall buoyancy, disregarding additional influences like swimming and water currents. To change the total buoyancy, divers can utilize equipment like diving weighting systems, diving suits, wet, dry, or semi-dry suits are employed depending on the water temperature, and buoyancy compensators. Divers work to achieve neutral buoyancy when they want to maintain a consistent depth. By minimizing the amount of swimming required to maintain depth, gas consumption is decreased. Water and the cornea of the eye have refractive indices that are higher in water than in air. Only the crystalline lens of the eye can focus light when it enters the cornea from water because very little light is refracted at all. As a result, there is severe hypermetropia. Therefore, those with severe myopia can see underwater without a mask better than those with normal vision. 
This issue is resolved by diving masks and helmets, which provide an airspace in front of the diver's eyes. With the exception of the fact that things appear around 34% bigger and 25% closer in water than they actually are, the refraction error caused by the water is mostly corrected as light travels from water to air through a flat lens. The frame and skirt of the mask, which hold the faceplate and are either opaque or translucent, greatly decrease the total field of view, requiring adjustments to eye-hand coordination. Simple but essential measures must be followed to ensure diver safety because the undersea environment is unknown and dangerous. The ability to pay at least minimal attention to detail and to take personal accountability for one's own survival are prerequisites. The majority of the techniques are easy to understand and become second nature to a seasoned diver, but they must be learned and require some practice to become automatic and error-free, just like walking or talking. The majority of safety precautions aim to lower the chance of drowning, while many others focus on lowering the risk of barrel trauma and decompression sickness. In some situations, becoming lost poses a major risk, and specific steps are taken to reduce the risk. Buddy and team diving techniques are designed to make sure that a recreational scuba diver who encounters trouble underwater is nearby a person who is similarly prepared and will be able to help. Divers are required to demonstrate proficiency in a set of prescribed buddy support abilities in addition to being prepared to assist in certain crises listed in the training criteria for their certification. Diver communication, gear redundancy via sharing breathing gas and gear with the buddy, and the additional situational perspective of another diver are the cornerstones of buddy and team safety. There is broad agreement that having a companion who is willing and capable of helping can lower the risk of some types of accidents, but there is considerably less agreement regarding how frequently this actually occurs. Solo divers assume responsibility for their own safety and make up for the lack of a friend with finesse, alertness, and the right gear. Similar to buddy or team divers, properly outfitted solo divers depend on the redundancy of essential pieces of dive equipment, such as at least two separate breathing gas sources and making sure that there is always enough gas available to end the dive safely if any one supply fails. The distinction between the two methods is that the solo diver manages and carries this redundancy instead of a buddy. Candidates for solo diving certification must have a significant amount of diving experience, typically 100 dives or more. Underwater crises that require immediate attention frequently include a contaminated breathing gas source. Divers are taught how to exchange breathing gas with one another in an emergency and are allowed to carry a backup air supply if they prefer not to rely on a partner. In the case that a depletion of breathing gas cannot be controlled at depth, divers might need to make an emergency ascent. Uncontrolled ascents are typically the result of a buoyancy control failure, whereas controlled emergency ascents nearly always follow a loss of breathing gas. Medical emergencies and loss of depth control are examples of other critical emergencies. The recovery of an unresponsive diver to the surface, where it would be able to offer first assistance, may require divers to be trained in recovery techniques that have been approved by the training organizations. Since some organizations do not include it in entry-level training, not all recreational divers receive this training. Professional divers may be required by law or a code of conduct to have a standby diver on hand at all times who is qualified and available to try to rescue a diver in distress. Scuba diving can be done for a variety of personal and professional purposes. Recreational diving is done solely for fun, and it includes a variety of technical specialties like cave diving, rig diving, ice diving, and deep diving to peak curiosity underwater. Scuba diving is the primary mode of underwater tourism, and the associated tour guiding must reflect this. Professional divers might be hired to complete tasks underwater. Some of these jobs lend themselves to scuba. Divers who work as instructors, assistant instructors, dive masters, and dive guides in the recreational diving industry do so either full or part-time. The professional aspect of recreational diver training, dive leading for pay, and dive guiding is recognized and governed by national law in several jurisdictions, with specific emphasis on responsibility for the health and safety of the clients.
That was for today. Thank you for staying with us. Don't forget to like our video and subscribe to our channel.